Oh, nothing like good piping music. All right. It's a cable company, uh, a subcontractor for cable. Yep, I done snuck into Discord and come up on the ass end of another conversation. Woohoo! <laughs> hey, Don. Right. Live with the Shaman. Gonna open with the disclaimer. This is an adult channel. We use adult language. We like to pretend we're adults. Uh-huh. That too and all the above. And I hope everyone is doing well. Today is Litha, Blessed Litha. Happy Father's Day to those who practice and follow Father's Day. Let's see, let's see. I think we all had one. Uh, yeah, I think that's a biological must there, isn't it? I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg. We, we can all claim that we had one, but we, not all of us can claim that we are one. <laughs> well, I don't know if you got fur babies, you know. Being yeah, fur, fur babies count. True enough. Be, being a dad, just like being a mom, does not require biological birth or forming of a child biologically. You can be a mom or a dad. Now, it makes you responsible to keep your fur babies from turning into moving fireball. <laughs> Good luck with that. Kind of like some uh, some two-legged children um, that don't think two inches in front of their nose. Four-legged children are much the same way. Yeah, they need to come out with a, uh, a happy stepfather's day. <laughs> Before most like me. <laughs> oh, I was reading Twitch's comment in Discord, and I'm like, wait, what? Oh, they're talking about game. All right. Must have been I having music. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Um. All right, uh, Raven, I'm going to ask this straight up so that I don't assume, assume. Um, what name do you like to go by on the internet so that I can call you whatever it is you're happy being called? Yeah, because you don't want him to invent something to call you. Hey. <laughs> I'm a nice guy. If you repeat that ten times every day by looking in the window, eventually you'll remember that to believe that. Shut up. <laughs> Even when See, I'm by not. the time we get, get him, to Jamie, get, him. get him, Jamie, get him. By the time we get to live with the shaman, I'm actually awake. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning to you. Good morning to you. What the hell? Well, you smell like a monkey and you look like you do. <laughs> so your topic today is all are all shamans the same? Uh, yeah. Jordan, no. Yeah. Hell no is the right answer. Yeah, because I forgot to post the title on the record page. Okay, I got it up there now. Hey. I'm slow, what can I say? Yes. Um I'm just four year old. <laughs> yeah, but how many zeros are at the end of that four? <laughs> yeah, right. Ooh, All nice. Right. She twist. says Amanda is fine. She says I work with Celtic deities normally. Alright. Alright. I resemble that remark. I like that remark too. Ah, uh, druid. Yeah, well, no, that Jamie's druid. Oh. I'm sorry. That's all right. We still love you. Yeah, we still love you. So, okay. Are all shamans the same? Well, that's kind of a rhetorical question. 
that's much like saying are all druids the same same or all witches the same are are all anything the same but one of the interesting things that I have always had fun with when it comes to shamanism is those people that send me a message and they say make me a shaman <laughs> poof you a shaman <laughs> poof you're a shaman no I wouldn't wish that on anybody Come on, you got to at least read at least one Cunningham book before you can call yourself a shaman. Number one, Cunningham was Wiccan. Thank you very much. Bite your tongue. I, I know that, but I'm just saying. Amy says, my best friend's husband is Asatru. Asatru is a very interesting path. I've my heard son is too. I've heard of three different denominations of Asatru. There is the enlightened path of the Asatru. Now correct me if I'm wrong because I'm 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 talking out my ass because my mouth knows better. This is just what I've heard. Um, there is the enlightened path of the Asatru. There is the prison version of the Asatru. And then there is the white supremacist version of the Asatru. We like the first version. Yes, the enlightened path. The the it, when I was doing prison ministry in Huntsville, um, a lot, a lot of the Asatrus that I met followed the prison version of Asatru, which really tries to, to hang to the enlightened path but there were those that were the white supremacists and those were the ones that kind of worried me just a bit um, and then just like every other pagan group who's ever had a movie created anything about their faith then there are the group of lots of true people that have seen Vikings on the History Channel and therefore they... Oh, yeah. Well... True. There is betwixt and between and there is... Charmed and the Blair Witch Project and... Yes, yes, yes! Um... What was the other one? Um, practical magic. Practical magic, yeah, yeah. Um, Let's not forget Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Sabrina the <laughs> Teenage Witch, yeah. Let's go all the way back to Samantha on Bewitched. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, I grew up watching the Bewitched program's first run. Me too, and I'm telling you what, I still have that nose twitch. I like it, but I never saw it as truth to reality of what witches were, even before I really even knew what witches were. Now, I am telling you, I went out to Boston, so I had to go to Salem because, well, that's just what all good pagan people who go to Boston do. So then I went up to Salem, and I had to go into Lori Cabot's little witchy store there in Salem, and I have to tell you what stereotype is us is all I'm saying yeah well usually yeah be bewitched was a really that good was program. just that was just before they told me that my famous Lori Cabot the one that I thought was so amazingly oh my gosh she's an author and she's amazing yeah she went to pick up one of her employees at his house to drive him to work pretty pretty normal people yeah. Um, pagans are regular people. But. We just barbecue the neighborhood children. It's okay. Well, that's mm -hmm. what they say. You know. Um, personally, if I was going to barbecue something, I wanted it to be a rack of, uh, rack of nice ribs on an open barbecue pit. 
that come from Preferably a cow. Preferably that came from a cow. Yeah, yeah. came from, yeah, a cow. Or um, sheep, or, you know, as long as it wasn't ribs of the human variety, I've never been into uh, bloody cannibalism. Have a cochon du lait, cher. Translate, you coon ass. <laughs> a cochon du lait is a big roast. <laughs> what? The bar uh, pig roast roasted on an open uh, uh, in, a, in a Cajun microwave metal box buried in the ground underneath the fire. Cajun microwave? Yep. You build a big old fire. You let it burn down the embers. You put your pig and all your seasoning and your vegetables in the, in a metal box. You dig a hole, and you put all the embers on top of the the box, and you let it slow roast. Nah, hell, now I'm getting hungry. Shut up. <laughs> that Show sounds up. like it could have been some kind of a primitive uh, torture. Well, the pig is dead well, first. <laughs> oh! <laughs> He's been cleaned already. It's dead. <laughs> Jamie, you know we love you even though you are from up north. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have a watch per I have a watch party going on in the Circle Liberty group. They're all over there watching you guys. Uh, say hello to them. Bye. Hello to them. Hi, guys. Hello them. <laughs> Hello to the poor people that are sticking around in live with the shaman. Bless your heart. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get on topic then and pretend we know what the hell we're talking about. We apologize about. to begin with. <laughs> Why? Because I'm certain that somebody's going to say something. I don't care. I'm pretty sure that they knew what a couchon de lait was. I had uh, no idea what a delay. I know what a delay is, but a couchon? Couchon is pig. Oink. Oink, oink, oink. Right. Anyway. The people from Boomerang, I know they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <clears throat> well. So for that little get together we keep talking about, I expect some kind of a microwave pig. <laughs> no, baby, you going to Texas, it'll be barbecue. Right. As long as I ain't cooking, I don't care. Whoever has that cute little ICP kind of sounding like alert is t always absolutely perfectly on. Uh -huh. It's gone. It's it, gone. It, it, it's me. It's on. It's on my uh, Google I am. I you, you got to understand. I started chatting. Well, I actually started chatting on a BBS on a DOS computer, but when Windows came out, one of the first chat systems to come out was ICQ. That's ICQ. the one, not ICP, sorry. ICQ was one of the first Windows chat programs to come out before Yahoo chat, and that was their notification was the uh-oh. Uh-oh. I love that. I do, too. That's why I kept a copy of it all these years. It only tends to register just at the we'll right we'll moment. Have to Perfect timing. What can I say? So anyway, are, shaw are all shamans the same? Well, let's talk about some of the different shamans, some of the different shaman philosophies. Are you talking about Russian and Native American kind of different types? Well, considering the word shaman came from Siberia. If you research... What's that? 
I said, you're welcome for the introduction and lead in. Yes, well, thank you very much. If you research where the word shaman come from, it came from Siberia, wasn't even recognized in America until the late 1930s. Prior to that, shamans were just simply known as healers. Well, the problem is... And medicine is, people. And medicine man, yes. And they coined the term, not to sound sexist, but they coined the term medicine man. That was what the Native American people were called. The medicine man of the tribe. You had the chief, the medicine man, who wasn't always a man, which I always found interesting. Most of the healers of most of the tribes were women. And even back in the ancients, back in the Celtic days, most of your healers back then were druid, and they were female. Yep. So, anyway, I digress. Right. Let's talk about the different types of shaman. The first question I generally start with is, are all are all shamans polytheistic? No. Now, if you don't know what polytheism or monotheism is, Google it. Okay. We agree. Not Do all. Do they believe in just one God or more than one God? Right. Thanks, Jamie. I was going to make them look something up. <laughs> Then they would have to leave this site in order to go do that. So we'll just give it to them for now. You have to look it up later. Yeah, okay. That's, that's cool. So when you think about a polytheistic shaman or a monotheistic shaman, when you're talking about a monotheistic shaman, are you talking about a Christian shaman? By definition. Well, by definition, yes. You could you could actually call a priest or a preacher a shaman by definition. By definition, you're right. But only by definition. Right. <laughs> but because if you call them a shaman to defense, they'd have to slap you. <laughs> probably. But if you take a look at the monotheistic shaman, you're mostly talking about the Native American shaman. Because the Native American shamans had one deity, and that was the Great Spirit. Period. End of discussion. Indians of the American Plains had Great Spirit. But they also had Mother Earth, Father Sky, all of their ancestors and their relatives who are animals and other people like that as well. But those were well, not we deity. Have, we have Jesus Christ and we have the saints. Where's the difference? The spirit, such as the water spirit of the Native Americans, the rock spirit, the horse spirit, the animal spirit, those are not deity to monotheistic shamans. When you're talking about deity to the Indians, they're going to call it Great Spirit and they're going to tell you straight up that no, the Water Spirit, Father Sky, Father Son, whatever, is, is not a deity. Once is made. Cindy, you're not muted. Wow. 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 Muted. <laughs> so. Shamanism is one of the few paths in pagan philosophy 
that does have at its core monotheistic and polytheistic belief systems in the different variables of shamanism. Wicca, by definition, is polytheistic. Witchcraft, by definition, is polytheistic. Polytheism, hence the pagan shaman philosophy, which is what I follow, Celtic shamanism, has a Celtic pantheon with a council of nine. We have spirit guides that are not of the council. So when people have come to me and said, I am a witch, I want to be a shaman. No. <laughs> <laughs> I am witch, Don. I want to be shaman. Well, you did. I wasn't witch. I was shaman. Well, now, here's one of the interesting things about shamanism. How many people realize that true shamanism Celtic shaman, Germanic shaman, Siberian shaman. How many of you realize true shamans don't really have a altar by definition of altar? Now that's not to say before I get my head handed to me on a platter, I have an altar. I know part of the training of the Grove of the Celtic Showman is how to set up an altar. But, but it is not required. No, it's not required. That's like Lucy. She's saying, I can't feel my altar. I don't know what to do with the altar. I said, do you have to have an altar, Lucy? You're shaman. You're it all the time. Because you could never set an altar up correctly, or she said correctly, or but the sorry. earth Mother Earth is our altar. Thereby Correct. any, you'll, you'll notice the picture of my altar behind me in that picture when we had our circle down south. But thereby proving my point of what I said earlier in that you don't need a candle in order to have a sacred space. No, you do not. Nope. Sacred space is in the being, in the essence of self. Now, in that, according to my research, and I feel like somebody somewhere will look up and try to prove me wrong, and that's okay, please do, I love learning. But it's in that that says, as far as shamanism goes, your sacred space is self. In that parallel of all shamans, that is the same. And the question that I've always loved is what is a shaman? In the over 20 some odd years of knowingly practiced shamanism, I have found that the hardest damn question there is to answer in this path of what is shamanism? <coughs> it's essentially a religion within of itself. And I'll explain that here in a minute. Shamanism is a lifestyle. You are or you're not shaman. Much like druid, 
You are or you're not Drew. We just did Open Pagan Church on the weekend pagans. And for those of you that might want to watch that, you can hashtag Open Pagan Church on Facebook. Ha ha ha. But when you're talking about what is shamanism, in order to understand shamanism, you first have to understand shamanism is a lifestyle. It is a myriad mismatch of what could be construed as different practices. I've had some people tell me that what I'm doing is Wiccan. No. No. <laughs> I've had some people that tell me what I'm doing is Druid. No. I've, I've seen enough Druid practice. I've been in enough Druidic called circles. The only thing that that has proven to me over the years is all paths do some of the things the same way. Shamans do not normally do ceremony. Hmm. And for those who don't know the difference between ceremony and ritual, Ceremonial magic is scripted. Ritualistic magic is not. Some of your Native American ceremonies are specifically scripted because in many of your Native American tribes there is an ABC. There are ABCs of practitioner. Things that you do. Things that you say in a particular timing. <coughs> songs that they sing. Yes, particular songs that are sang. Dances that are done. The dances are choreographed down to particular steps. The, the amount of steps that you do mean a certain thing. I can tell you in Celtic shamanism, there are no scripts. We have a basic idea of what we're going to do. We have a basic way that we set up the uh, multiple different types of altars we set up. If we're doing a triadogram or um, the triadogram altar, like you'll see in the symbol, it'll be on the left-hand side of your screen. The triadogram, you'll notice has, what, 13 points, I think. We have the nine, the council of nine, and this is something else that most shamans don't do. We don't, our cardinal points, uh, north, east, south, and west, our cardinal points are not aligned with particular elements. Our cardinal points are also not aligned with particular deities. Each cardinal point has its standalone meaning to us. Each elemental point, which is halfway between the cardinal points, giving it the circle of nine, great spirit and north always align for us. Well, in the Celtic Shaman, and here's, here's what causes the paradox of monotheism and polytheism for the Celtic Shaman. Monotheistically speaking, we have the Great Spirit. Well, the problem that blows people's mind is the Great Spirit is an androgynous being. It is neither male nor female, but it is both masculine and feminine. Now if I'm confusing the hell out of anyone, you can, if you're watching the recorded version, or you can come back later and rewind and replay if you need to. It's a wonderful thing about technology. 
I've had people I, get this. You're going to love this. I've actually had people on YouTube say, I missed the part where you were talking about so and so and such and such. Can you put up another video? Why didn't you just rewind the video you were watching and listen to it again? Because so and so and such and such are very confusing. I'm just saying. Rewind it and listen to it again. I'd like to interject this. Come on with it, Lester. And you're, I know you're going to say something. <laughs> As an eclectic Christian, I don't really classify as pagan, Drew, and uh, Wiccan. <clears throat> I use all. But one of the things that I've, I've listened in this broadcast is that we were talking about the altar. The altar is a ceremonial tool to help you focus. Mm -hmm. You don't need it. The wand is a ceremonial tool to focus. You don't really need it. Correct. Right on. I, I use, okay, when I'm in my garden, my ceremonial tools are a shovel, a hoe, and a rake. I put all my energy and effort into doing what I'm doing. Right. I focus my energy through those tools. Basically, that's all it is, is a tool. You don't need it to practice. In the same vein, your shovel might actually be your hands or a cup or whatever. It doesn't matter right. what the object. It's a tool. It's a, a means of focus. It, it doesn't necessarily define what you are. Right. When people are saying they're having trouble setting up altars, you don't need to set up an altar. I have no altar in my house. My house is my altar. Yep. Re crazily enough, I just bought a quote new altar yesterday in that when I became solitary and wasn't doing a ceremony every day, all my stuff sitting out got all dusty and dirty and it felt disrespectful. So I turned an old hutch with a glass door into my quote all absolutely it's a curio cabinet <laughs> right and now it's all there and it's all displayed but it's not all sitting out in any kind of a whatever y'all men heard me mention walt and sissy part of their training was they spent a week and a half teaching you exactly where to put the crap on the top of that right drove me nuts i'm like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter whether it's a sword or whether it's a blade or whether it's an athame or whether it's a butter knife. It doesn't matter. It's still enough. But see, herein lies the very thing that you guys are describing. There's a difference between a ritualistic altar and a ceremonialistic altar. Having befriended and known the Alexandrian third degree priestess that brought the Alexandrian tradition to Houston I spent a lot of yeah, time yep I spent a lot of time listening to her explanation and teaching of Alexandrian Wicca I I am far from knowledgeable of Alexandrian Wicca, but... Is that the one I know? Yes. Mm. Remembering the things that she was teaching her students. Mm. I still use some of that. Right. But... Alexandrian Wicca and Gardnerian Wicca and most of the other Wiccan traditions are very ceremonialistic. Things are laid out in a specific matter on an altar. Mm -hmm. Things are used in a specific time on the altar and it's very ceremonial. Um, 
I have also explained it to students like this. All of those things, setting those things up, watching someone use those things in a predictable manner, that kind of ceremony, actually helps to people all focus their attention on the same thing at the same time and all the energies are going in the right direction. Absolutely. Um, They're props. Right. But, you know, Lester said the same thing we've all been saying. They are simple tools of the craft. Um, Amanda says, she says, um, I made my altar a lot smaller and have moved it to where my youngest son can't touch it. Yes, absolutely. Kids and altars do not <laughs> match until they learn. Um, as, as you know, kids are learning, um, they're like any, you know, anybody else. They need to learn, don't touch that. That too, but he will also w learn by watching you and watching other things around you. Yes. And you'll see him take his tiny truck and make it whatever in his mind is doing that. And he will imitate your faith. Right. Yes, absolutely. But it all comes down to the point that the the interesting part with shamanism is, and and you guys correct me if I'm wrong. Shamanism is the only path that I know of that there are two variables of shamanism. There are monotheistic shamans and there are polytheistic shamans. And I'm talking about shamans. After all, we are a shaman channel most of the time. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that in your different paths and crafts? Do you find that you have monotheistic and polytheistic branches of your path? Everybody's quiet. Wow. Well, I mean, in, in like I said, in, in my religion, you know, we have Jesus Christ and then we have the saint. And the way I look at it is like this. If you lose your keys and you can't find them anywhere, are you going to bother God? Hey, can you help me find my keys? No, you go to you know one of the saints that is, I forgot which one it was, but the one that is the patron saint of lost items. Right. If you're taking a trip, and you feel like you need assistance, you don't say, God, protect me. You, you say, uh, St. Christopher, grant me safe, safe passage. Safe yeah. But in that exact sentence is exactly what we're talking about in borrowing each other's stuffy kind of ideas, because that idea came from what I was going to interject here in a little bit at my turn, which was that the Celts don't believe necessarily that there is a god like a superhero had never been a person. Every single one of their gods they believe was a person. So it was an ancestral kind of... You look at what Uncle Bob did to make the car run better, or you look at what Uncle Jim did to, make, to catch more fish, but you look to those people for their assistance because they've had that experience. They don't look at them like a monotheistic god. Right. Except for shamanism, Jamie. Right. I was saying there's the, the in the Druid way of looking at it, they don't look at anything as being monotheistic because they don't necessarily Mother Earth is about as deity or as um, what's the word I'm looking for is about the most um, monotheistic part I guess that I found isn't the primary deity of Druid called Gaia I think no no That's, Gaia is the name given to Mother Earth I think that Gaia is actually Greek. Yep. I stand educated on that then, okay. But to 
shaman, part of what makes shaman, shaman, um, I wanted to, to read uh, Amanda's post real quick. She says, uh, both of her boys have participated in rituals in one way or the other. Yes, absolutely. Love kid energy in a circle. But in shamanism, when you're talking about the primary deity, depending on the denomination of shamanism, there goes the thunder and lightning again. Oh, oh. I hear that. Um, that was actually Thor. Probably. He's delivering a message to you, Don. Probably. Get it right. <laughs> Good luck with that. But when you're, when you're thinking about shamanism, if we think about Great Spirit, Great Spirit is the founding energy, if you will, that has brought everything together. I stand corrected, Doc. Because when you said that, my interpretation in my head was, in my world, that's I call that a universe. I don't know whether that's Druid or just Jamie, but that's me. And I see that as the universe. It is a not-gendered, bigger-than-me, creator kind of entity. But that's where I was going. That I is, know. That is to shamanism what Great Spirit is. Great Spirit is not of what? It's not a who. It's never been of human form. And yet at the same time, it is everything and Great Spirit is nothing all at the same time. So as shamans come up through rank, at least in the grove of the Celtic shaman, we learn that you don't bother Great Spirit with your daily bullshit and daily drama. If you need to do something that requires a feministic philosophy, then you call either Great Mother or Goddess, whatever you want to call her. <coughs> or you call one of the goddesses on your council, which are the Council of Nine. If you need something done in a masculine matter that requires a masculine energy, you call on God, or you call on the masculine energy of the Great Spirit, or you call on one of the uh, male, uh, male deity within your council. None of our students in the Grove of the Celtic Shaman are allowed <coughs> to even offer to call the triad, which is the triangle in the symbol. Ooh, that was a nice one. Um, none of the students are allowed to even call the triad until they're at least a year into their priesthood. I like for high priest, personally. Um, tell a little story on Cindy. When yeah. she was a first year priest, that ding dong decided she was pissed off, so she was going to go for the big daddy and the big mama and call the triad. She wasn't a happy camper for seven days. Oh, no. I was sick. I had headaches. I was, oh, porcelain god. Woo! But it kind of goes back to what Lester was saying. Mm -hmm. We're not going to bother Great Spirit with our fundamental day-to-day -day sociological drama crap. And, of course... Pagans don't have a Jesus. We we don't have a savior that a male masculine God gave for our sins. Number one, pagans don't believe in sins. We follow karma. 
we follow cause and effect. Uh, cause and effect is simple. If I walk up and hit you, you're liable to hit me back. And at my age nowadays, it hurts too much to get hit back, so I just don't bother. But there are variables of shamanism, Native American being one. There is a single great spirit, which is everything that is above you. Great spirit is the sky, the sun, the, the solar system, the cosmos, the, the everything. But it is a single monotheistic great spirit. Water spirit is not a deity, but it is a living spirit. Yep. The spirit of the mountain, one of the many of the Native Americans, are a spirit. They're a living spirit. They're not a deity. I know that the Pectish, the, the Pectish tribal philosophies, which is where Celtic shamanism comes from, is related to the Tuatha Dé Danann. So part of the study of the Grove of the Celtic Shaman is to understand the organization and the platform of the ancient Fey of the Tuatha Dé Danann, the little people. But when you're looking at Siberian Shaman, I never really got a chance to dig too deep into it. But to the Siberian Shaman, everything is spirit. Everything is deity. Everything is talked to and praised to. Um, when they kill an animal, they praise the animal as if it were a deity. And you first have to understand the difference of a deity and something that is a spirit. Does that make any sense? Yes. What do you guys think? It's very similar to Native American beliefs. I, I would that would be hour long side event conversation, but uh, it's similar to that. Yes. But I wouldn't. And the Native Americans don't necessarily see the animal as a deity or a god. They see it as an ancestor and as a fellow being, and they think it's for its sacrifice, and they honor it, and they give it a sacrifice in return. Right. And that's kind of what I was saying. They see it as a spirit or an ancestor or a totem or wherever you want to go with it. But one of the big paradoxes of shamanism, if you will, which is why most students that come into shamanism only make it for about the first six months to the senior student level because within that first six months, they go batshit crazy just trying to understand the paradox of being a shaman. The reason for it is, is they're trying to rationalize the, not the irrational, but they're trying to rationalize something that cannot be rationalized. Shamanism is acceptance of the things for which we don't understand. A lot of our path and our underlying yes is very science based. We tend to take a look at science and we go, okay, that makes sense, that describes a lot. But then I take that science and I take a look at it from a spiritual aspect and I wonder did the science simply come up with a way to describe the undescribable? Is science itself to a degree not an oxymoron? Herein lies one of those things 
where shamans love to jump down the rabbit hole of what if. As you come up through the ranks, if you will, of shamanism, the object is to learn how to pull yourself up out of that rabbit hole. In short, no. Not all shamans are the same. One of the biggest differences is the monotheistic or polytheistic of the different shamans throughout the world. Shamans are very village oriented, if you will. We're uber protective of our traditions, of our ways, of our villages, of our family. And you don't have to be blood to be family. Sometimes we are ridiculously protective of our spiritual families. So, before we call it, anybody else have any input? I think you pretty much covered it all, Don. Damn. Did I cover it all or did I beat it to death? <laughs> I think you beat it to death, but <laughs> you covered it all. Love you too, Lester. And you gave it a good ass whip in the boot. <laughs> but you know, our broadcasts are done for, for the newbies that are coming into paganism. They're looking for different paths. They Maybe they're looking into shamanism. So when we do these broadcasts, it, you know, we're using the experience of you guys in <laughs> chat and in Discord. We're using y'all's experience as well as my own to kind of give these guys different insight to what they're looking at. It's a teaching tool. Right. Another part of the, another part of the ceremonial tool. Another <laughs> part of the tool. Well, you know, I, um, I want to absolutely, you know, welcome, God, I am horrible with names. Um, I want to welcome Amanda to this place. Feel free to join us anytime and hit us up, you know, hit us up on, in, in our groups. If you want to know where we are or what our links are, anybody, let us know. We'll send you the links if you want to PM me feel free to send me a PM and I'll send you a list of our links. Your, your comments are welcome. Um, and, and we definitely always love everybody being here that's in, uh, you know, that's in Discord. All of the different ideas, philosophies, and theories. It's kind of what makes us who we are, you know, is the ability to say, okay, I see your point. I don't have to agree with it. Doesn't mean I disagree with it. There you go. But anyway. Right. Well, you guys, thank you for watching. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful week. And uh, we'll see you next week. You're on Live with the Showman. Have a great day. You may, you may not. You may.